Hi, this is Tanya Sheridan at inallsassiness.com and today I wanted to teach you how to make this cute little 5x7 gnome card that is also going to double as the front page of my 6x8 recipe album that goes like this. So I'm going to walk you through um, all of the pieces, how to put it together, and then um, at the end I will give you a shopping list of the items that you would need if you wanted to create it yourself, where you can purchase the kit from, and other instructions as well. So I'm going to leave this right over here just so that you can see it as a point of reference. And the first thing that we're going to do is all of these little wooden shapes we are going to color with our gold shimmer brush. Now I've already done this for us, but I'm going to show you on an extra one. These are our wooden shapes. They're the Eat, Play, Love. And they're all sorts of fun um, little kitchen things. So there's a spat or a rolling pin, there's some mittens, there's a little mixing, all sorts of fun pieces. There's a, a, quite a variety, so of course you could switch it up if you wanted to, um, but I thought that these pieces worked well in the word celebrate. So you can see if you um, zoom in a little bit that I have organized the pieces on a piece of paper. They kind of slid a little bit, um, and I have a still picture that I will post with the instructions so that you know from the pack exactly which pieces that I used. But what you're going to do is you're going to take your gold shimmer brush and I usually pull, do a little pull off to the side and use that to kind of dip from like a paintbrush. And then you're just going to carefully go over and add the glitter. And with these I did about two layers to each one. It soaks into the wood a little bit. You don't want it to be solid gold, but you want to have kind of that iridescent feel. Now, if you notice, if you look at it closely, and I'll hold my hand up, there are some etchings in some of the pieces. And so by using the gold, it's more of an iridescent. And so it still allows you to see all of those little etchings, where if you're using a darker color, then you unfortunately aren't able to see those. And so I wanted to still capture those pieces. So you're gonna do all of these little pieces, and then you're gonna set it aside to dry. Um, usually about five minutes or so is a good timing for that to dry. So then we're going to start building our card and we're going to start with the pieces. This piece here is an overlay that was created with the Artfully Scent um, Cricut Collection and I'll um, put a tab at the end of how you can get that if you don't already own it, if you would like to cut it. Um, but it was a card that I resized and so it, it cuts out the letters to the word celebrate, okay? And so we are going to glue that down to a piece of toffee paper that was cut to size. And close to my heart's cardstock, if you were unaware, it is two sides. So one side is darker and that is the true color. So this is the true color of the toffee and then there's a lighter side. So we're actually gonna use the lighter side. And I'm gonna flip over this overlay and I'm gonna slide this off so I don't get adhesive where I don't want it. I'm just gonna come down and put my adhesive all the way around the edges. I don't want my pieces to pop up. And then I'm gonna just kinda of catch some of those inside pieces. What I do want you to make sure that you do is on the insides of the E's, you want to come across just ever so carefully and make sure that you capture those because you don't want those to pop up and tear. Now in the six by eight recipe album, it's not that big of a deal because you have a page protector to protect it. But in the card, if you're doing the five by seven version of the card, it'll be handled a lot because everyone's gonna think, oh, it's such a cute card. And so you wanna make sure that those pieces stay down, okay? So you're gonna center it um, as designed and then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna take this piece and we're gonna attach it to the candy apple. And you can see that there is foam tape in between it. So I prefer to use the thin foam tape. Close to my heart has a thin and a regular. Both of them come with a wide and a narrow. So these are the same heights, but I do prefer the thin. And I'm gonna just put that on the back. I do want, I, use, I tend to use a lot of foam tape um, because I want it to be flat and even all the way across. So I'm just gonna trim that with my non-stick scissors. You, of course, don't have to use nearly as much of the foam tape. Again, it's up to you, but I feel like 
it just gives it more sturdiness, especially for a card. I would say that I don't use as much in my scrapbook, but that wouldn't be truthful because I do use a lot there as well. So I'm going to just come all the way down just like that. And it looks like on this piece, I exceeded it just a little bit. So I'm going to pull it back and just snip that. Now, when you're mounting it, you certainly don't have to pull every piece. You just want it to um, capture and hold tight to your base. But I, again, tend to pull them all off if at all possible. So I'm going to get this last one. And then this is not centered, okay? It is centered um, between the left and the right with the same margin at the top. But it is not centered on the bottom. There is a space. So we're going to go ahead and pop that up. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's hand created. So, you know, if there's some quirks, you're all good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach this grow grain red ribbon. And when I use ribbon like this, I tend to like to use my, I call it red line tape. It's a double stick kind of a tacky tape. Um, lots of companies sell it. You can find it at Michael's and other craft stores. Um, if you are a member of the Scrapbook Expo group um, that I'm a part of, several vendors sell that as well. I think um, Tesla is one that I've gotten it from. So it's just a flat, nice sticky tape. It holds down the ribbon. It's not like um, a glue that makes it hard because it absorbs into the ribbon or anything like that. It's just a great adhesive. So I'm actually gonna line my card back up and it's okay if you exceed into this space because your little gnome is going to cover that okay so i'm going to flip it over and then i'm going to pull it off the back and this is going to hold it tight if i were to cut that which i could it you know there's a good chance that it's going to fray on the edge and I, I just i hate when it frays so i try to cover on um, both sides of my ribbon at all possible when all possible Okay, so now we have those pieces done. We're going to actually go ahead and glue on our little wooden shapes. So I'm going to set those right here. And I like to use the glue dots for the wooden shape. You could use liquid glass. You could use um, the Tombow liquid glue, whatever that you would like. But I like to use the glue dots because when I put them down, they stay. And I don't have to worry about them sliding around in the glue. So I am just going to go ahead and put the wood directly to the glue dot and I'm going to accent each of the little letters. And I tried to use some of the kitchen tools that kind of followed the shape of the letters themselves. These are made here in the United States. They're made in Utah. They're made by Close to My Heart directly, which is pretty cool. Okay, so these three shapes are the same. They are a solid flower, okay? This one for the E, these two E's are gonna be your smaller, um, more petaled flower, I guess would be a good way to describe it. And I will try to talk you through those as we go. There's two of that size. So one's gonna go on the top E and one's gonna go on the bottom E. The next one is the next size up. So it's a little bit bigger, you can see in comparison. And that is gonna go on this E over here. So we're gonna put that down. And then the last E we're actually going to put on our A. So when we cut these out, this is the A, but our gnome is in place of the A. And so um, she's holding the little A. So we are gonna go ahead and put this big flower with the lots of petals in the center of the A. I'm gonna get another piece of the tape. I hope I'm still under camera here. And I'm gonna do the hearts. And there are um, two sizes of the hearts that we are using. There's several other sizes in the bag, but we're using the small hearts. And those are gonna kind of go at a curve to make the stem of the A. And then we're gonna set that aside for when we're ready to attach them to her. And you can stack them, you can do them either way, however you wanna do that. 
So I'm gonna set that little A up there, okay? Then there is a salt shaker and a pepper shaker. It's the exact same piece. If you wanted to get really intricate, um, you could use a journaling pen or a Sharpie um, or some type of a paint, and you could put an S and a P. I'm afraid it would absorb in, so I was a little afraid to try it, but um, I know that a lot of you are way more talented with different mediums than I am. Now I have the T kind of, um, I'm gonna slide it down a little bit, it got too tight. high. So that the salt and pepper um, edge or the top, between the top and the base is going where the cross section of the T is. And that one I have at a little bit of an angle to the left. And then the one up on the R, I have at a little bit of an angle going more towards the right, just a little bit. I think the angling makes this project really, really fun. I'm gonna put the second little heart over here and the little tail of the R and it almost kind of touches. So you might wanna play with it just a little bit. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the whisk. Now the whisk is a little bit tricky as is the spatula because the space here is bigger than the glue dot. So I just pull the glue dot off and use my fingers to kind of curl it under so that it fits the way I want it to. We really don't want it to exceed too much because we don't want it to catch on something else. And it's not really straight, it's a little bit at an angle. And then on the part of the B, the center of the B, that's where we're gonna use the larger of the heart shapes that we selected. And that, again, the, the part, the pointy part of the heart is gonna come down towards the whisk so that it looks more like a bee. And then that just leaves us with the little spatula. And so I'm gonna do the same thing. Now this one is even smaller, the stem or the handle, than the previous whisk. So again, we're gonna to have to be really, really intricate there and I just kind of use my fingers to curve that glue down. And then this one I did at a little bit of an angle, just like that, okay? And that is gonna do the majority of our card itself, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this out of the way for the moment. And we're gonna go ahead, if you were doing the cookbook version, which is a six by eight version, we are using the dark side of the paper, of the toffee cardstock, and we are just going to splatter it. So I'm using my finger, and I'm gonna move it slightly. If you move it too fast, then your dots are gonna kinda of leave tails and do a trail behind it. I'm not really worried about the center, although it's kinda of hard to get just at the angles or just at the corners. But I want to have a nice kind of splattered gold effect. I don't wanna overkill just enough to really um, be able to see that gold. And again, that is if you were doing the cookbook version. So then I'm gonna take a baby wipe just because I don't wanna get it on everything. Usually I have a paper towel as well, but I don't have a paper towel with me right now. So we're just gonna let that air dry really quick. Actually, I do have a towel I can use. That's just gonna get that glitter off and then it's going to allow that to dry before we're ready to attach it. Okay, so now comes the fun part of creating the gnomes. Now the gnomes were cut out and stamped with the, our kitchen gnome set, which is new to Close to My Heart. It is available now. Um, if you're watching this video during the month of April, it's actually on sale. So make sure you grab it while it's on sale. It is absolutely adorable. So you can see that we have um, three different gnomes. You can see them here and I have one on my block right now. But there's one that kind of reminds me of the gnome or the little chef in the Muppets. And then there's this guy and then there's a girl gnome with her little braids. Now you'll notice that she has 
um, a phrase and a pocket. And if you looked at my gnome, I'm gonna show you in a second, I took those off. So um, her little apron says boss of sauce, of the sauce, which is really stinking cute. Um, but for what we're doing, it kind of got in the way. So I'm gonna show you how to um, do that. But you can buy the stamp set just by itself, uh, or you can get the stamp set with the thin cuts. There are um, five thin cuts. So I have three in my package right now, or four in my package, sorry. I have the two, two of the gnomes. The other one is actually being used right now. There's a mixing bowl and there's a spoon and then there's the little spice or salt and pepper shaker. So these all come in the set. Again, you can buy them individually, just the stamp set or with the thin cuts. If you have a way to cut out um, with a thin cut machine, whether it be Sizzix or Cuddlebug or Close to My Heart version, I would actually highly recommend that because it's such a cute cut and it'll save yourself a lot of time. So this is close to my heart's Bursa mat. You'll notice that I was working on it. It has a hard surface and it has measuring tools, but if you flip it over to the back side, it has a cushion that is designed for cushioning stamps. So we're gonna be using that. And I've pre-done a few steps, but I am going to show you how exactly that I did those. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna stamp and um, I moved my stamp, there we go. So we're gonna stamp the, the little gnome on scrap paper, okay? And this one, you only are focusing on the nose and the two little hands. That is all that we need from this gnome because if you notice on the card or on the recipe piece, um, they're popped up over the letter A, okay? So that's all we really need. You don't even have to st stamp the entire thing if you don't want to. Um, you could just stamp that space. And then I'm just gonna come in and kind of intricately cut as close as I can. I really do want that black line, that outline. And it is a smaller piece. Now, if you have a phobia of, of fussy cutting, that is okay. You don't have to cut out the hands. Um, they still show underneath. That is your choice, but I think it looks really, really cute with the hands cut out. Now, if you get really close and you can't get all of the white off, you could also um, color that in with the marker. Just color it black and nobody will know the difference. I know everyone's at different levels of um, cutting and fussy cutting and that type of thing. So we're gonna cut out both hands And again, you can stamp this on a smaller. I did use archival ink, or you could use the intense black, either one of those. Those are better for coloring and markering, and it doesn't bleed as much. And these are, like I said, they're pretty intricate, but I think it looks really cute. I wish that that had come. We've had stamps before that have had the little hands. We had a little elf one time that had the little hands that just popped out and that's what gave me the idea. Okay, so there's your two hands. That one I still need to get a little bit closer. It's a little bit trickier doing it under the camera. Okay, and then we're gonna cut out the nose and the nose is really, really cute. That's a much easier cut. And if you're absolutely in love with this set, we have, Close to My Heart has several gnome sets. We have a Christmas set that is adorable. There is a garden gnome set. There's a spooky gnomes for Halloween. And then there's also our original one. So most of them are uh, more of this chunky size. The original gnomes um, were called Gnome Matters and they are still available. They are on the, the stamp special this month, um, but those are a little bit smaller in size. They're not quite as um, chunky, but super, super adorable. I think that's probably my favorite one is the Gnome Matters. But you can mix and match. Um, of course, you don't have to use them for the season that they were designed for. Okay, so those are those three little pieces. We're setting those aside. This is going to be what my gnome looks like before I color her. And I wanted to show you how I achieved that. 
So I did a couple of things. First of all, if you are a stamper, then your post-it notes should be your very best friend. I love my post-it notes. So um, now post-it notes kind of go like this, right? Not all the sticky is at the top. So however your post-it note is, you want to find the sticky part. That's what we're focusing on. And so we're gonna stamp her. Here's my sticky, right? I'm gonna slide my ink pad over. And I really only need the top or the bottom of her skirt. That is what I am trying to achieve right there, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this post-it note off and it's sticky underneath. That's what I that's what I was going for. And I'm gonna simply cut around. This is called a mask. So I'm gonna cut around her skirt. Because I don't, I would love the pocket, but it, it doesn't show up, so um, we don't really need the pocket, okay? And so I'm gonna then take my mask and I'm gonna use it on a blank gnome, which I've already cut out. Okay, we'll slide this up here so you can see. And I stamped it again and made a template because this matches exactly. And I'm gonna lift this up, put my post-it note down here, and then put this mask back on just to make sure that all of that space is covered and is about where I want it to be, okay? So then I'm gonna move my mask over. I'm gonna open my ink pad again. I'm gonna ink up my gnome and I'm going to stamp. Now, because it's pink, I can see where that mask is to make sure that I'm lining it up correctly, okay? So then I'm gonna pull it off and usually um, with the post-it notes, I can get three or four out of one mask before it just gets too yucky, okay? So then when I peel it off, I have stamped this boss of sauce on the post-it note and not on my gnome itself, okay? So that's how you would do those. And then I just hold on to these masks. I just slide them down in my stamp case um, with the stamps and I have it for good, okay? So then I went ahead and I colored in my gnome and I know that she's holding a bowl, but our A is gonna cover that. So I wanted to make sure that I covered the top of the bowl as if it was her dress or her apron so that it was covered in case I didn't get my A on exactly the way that I wanted it. I wanted to make sure that everything you know, was covered and so forth, okay? Um, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip over my A and I'm gonna put my foam tape behind it. And I'm gonna use the narrow this time. So it's still the same height, it's just, it's it's narrower and it fits my space better, okay? And you could use either one. The dots are really nice too. I'm gonna to show you the dots in a second um, for her hands. That is the one thing that I really, well, I like lots of things, but one thing I really like about Close to My Hearts um, foam tape is that it's all the same height. If you go thin, whether you're using um, the strips or whether you're using the dots, they're the same height. And the same thing for the regular. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the foam tape off. I want her to look like she's holding the A. So I'm gonna try to line it up the best that I can from the hands that were already there. And that's why I said that, you know, even if you're not good at fussy cutting. As long as you see those hands, you're still good, but I think popping them up just makes it a little bit cuter. So these are the dots. We're gonna do her nose first, and I usually double check, and you can tell because they're on clear acetate that they're gonna be too big. So I, when I cut them, I cut them on the acetate itself. It makes it much easier than getting it stuck on your scissors and I just press it down. I'm gonna pull the film off, and then I'm gonna attach her nose. It's kind of tricky to see which way her nose goes. There it is, right on top. Now, when I colored these, I used the Tri-Blend markers, and I used the um, Fair Skin Blend, the Earth Brown Blend, and the Dark Red Blend. So for the red in her dress or her apron, I used the light tip, the very light, that was the truest to our candy apple. 
For her hair, I used um, the medium tip uh, for most of her hair, and then I outlined it in the dark tip. And of course, you could change her. You could do a white-haired gnome or a black-haired gnome or um, whatever you like. Uh, and you could change the skin tone, too. Um, and then for the skin tone, I chose to use the Fair Skin Blend, and I used um, the medium for her face itself, and then I used the dark for her nose and her hands. So you, of course, can change it up however you want. Now, for her hands, I found that it was better to put the foam tape directly on her hand. It's about, it's, it's not exactly half, it's more of like a third. But it was easier to get it down. I didn't have to fussy cut with it as much. And so I put it directly over her hands. And then what I did was I took these, and we're gonna just do it on the back of the ink pad. And I put adhesive on them because part of it, part of the hand is not, you have to make sure you've got your hand going the right way, is not covered under the foam tape and you don't want it to um, pop up. Oops, you can see I got it at a funky angle there. My hands are just a little bit tricky. Okay, here we go. Now, this one I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna put adhesive on the back and put that right on there and I will pick it up so that you can see the detail better. But see how it's just popped a little bit, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring her back in so you can see her better. Now we're gonna put regular foam tape on her and I'm gonna do it on her hat under her face and under the top part of her body, one row each, okay? Because this piece here is already popped up on foam, okay? But the bottom is not, and we don't want to go her to look like she's on a hill or a mountain. So on the bottom, I'm gonna put one piece of foam tape, pull the film, and then put another piece directly on top of it. Now, if you happen to have the regular and you're using the thin, then you could just put one piece of regular here. But for me, I just tend to just use the thin and make it work for how I want it to work. Okay, so then the next thing I'm gonna do is I have her at a little bit of an angle. So I'm gonna take my film off. And you'll notice on the back, if you look closely, the markers bleed through the paper. So you always wanna make sure that you're not coloring on something that you don't want it to bleed through. Um, that's another great thing about having the thin cut is that you can, her nose is crooked, you can um, stamp and color and then pop it up and it's not right on your original piece of artwork, okay? So then I'm gonna just kind of um, put her however I can at an angle slide this up a little bit so you can see it better and just gently press down okay so you can see if you look at it under the side camera that it's all she's all the same height now because the top is height one over this and the bottom is height two and it makes it all even now you could come back in if you wanted to with the gold shimmer pen let's do that and just I would um, wipe it off on the thing first and just like outline the little um, pieces of her braids, as long as your um, pen isn't too dark, okay? You could do that, you could add shading, um, some gray to her hat. I'm not super great at shading, so I just left her as is. So then what you would do is if you are making this as a five by seven card, you would go ahead and take your card base and just put adhesive around your card base and put this entire front right on your card base and you would be ready to go. Now, on the stamp set, there are also some really cute sentiments. So um, it's, I need you to gnome, um, you're super just a little gnome cooking and whisking you a happy day. So there's some fun little things as well as the little bowl and the spoon that you could stamp on the inside of the card. So that would be super cute.
But I have partnered mine with my recipe book, which will be a six by eight recipe book. Um, I will be teaching each and every page of it. And so this would be the finished cover for my recipe book. Now it's gonna go in a, a page protector, as I mentioned, and so that will um, protect it as well. And then you could decide if you are a straight on person, and sometimes I am very straight, wanting everything to be evened up, you could put it straight. But because all the little pieces are at fun angles, um, in my book, I want to put it at a fun angle like that. So that is what I have for you. I hope you've enjoyed this little um, cooking with our kitchen gnomes from close to my heart and creating either five by seven or the title page for the recipe book. For more ideas and more tutorials on the rest of these projects, you can go to www.inallsassiness.com. That's www.inallsassi.com. N-E-S-S -S dot com. Have a sassy day. Thanks.